Okay, so if we're talking about spin loft. So here's my best one. Um, yeah. So I hit a lot up on it. I delivered 17 degrees of loft um, and got 1,915 spin, right? So, so that spin loft number. Yeah. Explain what that is and why that's so critical to driving it long. Absolutely. So generally, basically what you're doing here is when this is a positive number, you're subtracting from how much loft you delivered. And right? so, so attack angle being positive means if you've got the golf ball here, negative, positive. Exactly. You guys see that okay? So negative, downward, positive, upward. Yeah, so it's based okay. on the horizon, right, is, yeah. is your attack angle. So we're talking degrees here. So again, eight degrees is not a whole lot, but in the in this these terms, it's a lot. A ton, yeah. Right, so basically, like all things considered, say I hit this dead center in the face, 16.9 minus 8.3 is about nine, right, is, is kind of the idea with it. So obviously that was not perfectly dead center. Right. Um, now, you, it, it, can we keep that on there for a second? Yeah. So, so people, because this is a big thing, people need to understand spin loft. So... The loft on my driver right here, it's actually set to 11 degrees. Okay. I, need, I need loft. So if I was to swing up at 8.3 degrees, there's a good way and a bad way to deliver loft. The bad way is by releasing the club up into it Absolutely. and scooping it. Yeah. The good way is to have my hands drag the grip up through it yeah. and have the club head essentially not release, but travel upward. Yeah. So you can see the one thing to understand too with that is like, I did deliver more loft than what's on my driver, right? So I am scooping it somewhat, right? So- mm -hmm. um, And that was a crazy case. Yeah, that's an extreme example, right? Yeah. Um, that would be one where if you are trying to hit it further on a downwind par five or something like that, or you've got a very tall tree to kind of carry it over, um, because that was at 140 feet of height, so that's a lot higher than it's I normally crazy. hit it, which is which is dramatic. So and, and so spin loft, so people understand, is your dynamic loft minus your attack, your attack angle. angle. Exactly. So in this case, the attack angle was positive, and those numbers will they, be slightly they vary skewed, a little bit depending but, on where you strike it on the face. Yeah, a strike yeah. on the face changes it, but if you know it's roughly you know dynamic loft minus attack angle creates spin loft. Exactly. So Mark. If you have the stomach, do you mind? Why don't you hit some? Okay, so let me grab my And driver. actually send some drivers. Okay. Why don't you pop that shirt off, too, if you want. <laughs> you sure? It's up to you. I mean, uh, that's all right. you know, it. It, you look like a complete idiot. Okay, well, you, you look. It. You look good. You made it. You look good. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to take my moo, moo off in a second here. Yeah. But I will show the audience mm -hmm. basically how we accomplish that, right? Yeah, so, show all of my fans how yeah, you accomplish All of your fans. So the one thing is like, obviously everybody, I mean, you want to hit the fairway, right? But everybody wants to hit their driver marginally further. Um, you don't always have to swing faster to do that, right? Having ideal launch conditions, which is kind of what we're highlighting today, can make a huge difference in how far you hit it, right? So I show people all the time in fittings, say they're swinging at 95 miles an hour and they hit three or four degrees down on it and deliver 17 degrees loft. So it would kind of look something like this, right? So I'll do a quick example here. I had to pull a matrix that T went by my ear. <laughs> so that one there, I, I had 19 and a half degrees of loft. I had a negative attack angle of 0 0.7. So it gave me a 20.3 degree spin loft, which created 2,800 spin around. So which is 19.4 minus negative seven, yes. which, or negative 0. 0.7, yeah. which adds a minus a minus, exactly. adds the 0. 0.7 degrees on there. Exactly, right. so if, yeah, so that's where like, if, if I'm adding loft to driver and hitting up on it, those two things can balance each other out. But if I'm hitting down on it and I have a ton of loft, that's when those two things really add together and create way too much spin. So that only spun at 2,900, right? Well, I hit it high on the face. So there's part of the reason why Okay, that wasn't as bad as, as what you'd expect, but that was 94 and a half miles an hour. And basically the optimal that I can hit that is, let's say it's 250, right? But with an upwards attack angle, I can exaggerate that and I can probably hit it 265 with that speed, right? So that's where you don't always have to hit it further. Um, understanding your launch conditions is a big deal. And that's kind of a spin loft is a, is a, is a big thing to understand. Um, how we're trying to create that, right? So if I grab that big high T again, 
the goal here, obviously, like, like Matt highlighted or said, we're not trying to hit up on it like this, right? I'm not trying to add all this loft or impact. Part of it is that ball's up on a tee. My hands are, are a little bit behind it or, or generally level, but the ball's forwards in my stance. So technically, I'm probably gonna deliver a little bit more loft than, than, than what's on there if I hit up on it, um, which in theory, you do wanna launch, or you do wanna create a little bit more loft on the, on the driver head if you are someone who dramatically hits up on it, right? But I would put this ball more forwards in my stance. I get a little bit of a tilt back here, um, which creates kind of that upward motion through impact. Um, and then I would do what I did in the challenge and lost. I would hit up on this dramatically and try and deliver the minimal loft that I can, right? So that would be the goal here. So let's try one. Okay, so that's hit pretty good. Yeah, drew it a little bit. Um, yeah, trying to hit up on it a lot will, will create a bit more wacky path for you just because yeah. that's not natural. But for sure. So there we've got you, your attack angle was 8.7 degrees. Dynamic loft, and again, dynamic loft being loft delivered at impact exactly. is 13.8. Yeah. So again, your dynamic, 13.8 minus your 8.7. Yeah. So you didn't quite strike it perfect. That yeah. gives you eight degrees of yeah. spin. So the, the one thing though to understand is you get to a ceiling, right? Or you get to a basement. You really can't get, even if I had, that would have been five degrees of spin loft, but that doesn't happen, um, if, if that makes any sense. So you get to a point where it can't go any lower, right? So there's an example of 1,784 spin. There was quite a bit of side spin on that as well because I drew it at 150 feet of curve, right? So it's a 50 yard draw. So that spin rate that you see with TrackMan is a total spin. So that includes how much it spins right to left as well as how much it spins back. So the actual backspin number on that shot would have been a heck of a lot lower than 1800, um, which is just too unstable, right? It, the golf ball at that point, it's like when a pitcher throws a knuckleball, right? It, it, it tends to move, right? There's, there's no rifling effect or there's no aerodynamics to, to allow that golf ball to stay straight. It's going to move. Um, obviously that wasn't a perfect strike, but even when you're someone who has this big high launch and low spin, you can be a little bit less accurate um, because that golf ball tends to do something that you didn't really expect. Um, so and essentially, less backspin means you're going to have more side spin. Right? For, yeah, in theory, so you can right? Get so more wild. Exactly. So, so it can why get. Don't, why don't you do this for us? Yep. Hit one the way you'd hit it. Okay. So just a normal one. So so I'm going to change the view. Okay. I'm going to take my shirt off. Yeah, you can. <laughs> you can take that. I'm going to take off. my moo moo off. Let's even set it. You know. Little country club view here. Okay. Okay. So there's a fairway, pretty pretty generous size fairway. Yep. Very, so, very generous. Yeah. Um, I love fairways that big. Nick. Here, keep that in a safe place for me. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I will. This is. Uh, Make sure it doesn't really fall out of the back of your car or anything crazy. It's uh, no, no. Don't you worry. We'll keep it safe. Three <laughs> XL. Okay. So. So just so hit one the way you would normally hit it. The way it on I would course. normally hit one. Yeah. So I do hit up on it, but obviously not nine degrees. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's just, just see it. an actual gamer shot. Is it pretty solid? Not bad. Not pretty solid. Okay. I mean, looking at that there, I mean, your dynamic loft, 15 degrees. Yeah. Angle of attack, six degrees, six degrees. 5.9. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you totally buttoned it. You hit it no, pretty it good. It yeah, it was, I'd take, I mean, I'd take that for sure. It, uh, everybody would take that. <laughs> it went 330. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so, spin loft, 9.2 degrees. Yeah. So, again, the lower the spin loft, the less it spins. Exactly, exactly. Most people think, oh, I got to spin it less. If you swing at 90 miles an hour, yeah. odds are you need more spin to keep the ball in the air. True, right. When you swing at, that was uh, just under 118. When you're swinging at 118, you need less, again, the ball has enough speed to climb. Yeah. You don't need as much spin to keep it in the air. You For sure. get it's, away with less. It's kind of like what we talked about with irons, right? Is, is my dad or your dad's gonna have to launch it higher to create the same yeah. peak height or even less, right? So with driver, obviously for me, I am someone who hits up on it, right? So this was, this challenge was supposed to be in my wheelhouse, right? Is, is I am someone who you were hits just dumb. five or six up on it. Um, and I don't deliver a ton of loft and I get a fairly low, low spin rate. Um, and I think that's where Matt tends to be a lower launch guy, um, but he's very accurate. So I think 
this was a, a challenge for me to kind of show you guys, you know what, it's not too dissimilar to what I normally do. Um, I try not to hit up on it too much because of the, the things I talked about previously is like, it becomes unstable. The more I hit up on it, the more that there's rotation in that face and the more that I tend to draw it. So I try and level it out generally, but if I'm on a par five, I'll probably hit five or six degrees up on it, right? Trying to get that thing launching high, trying to get it to carry what it did. Um, but if I'm playing kind of just a shorter par four, um, I'm either not hitting this or I'm going to level out my attack angle a little bit, which will give me a little bit more stability. And I might not hit it 330, but I might lose 15 yards or so. Um, and, and so again, people understanding how to manipulate spin loft. Yes. Yes. It's dragging the handle forward, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. As opposed to, and dragging the handle forward and upward. Yeah. As opposed to, releasing the club upward. Absolutely, right? So yeah, if I obviously if I put that ball way forwards in my stance and I kind of throw my right hand at it and let my left hand take over, well, that's when I'm sure I'm gonna have an upwards attack angle, but I'm gonna deliver too much loft. And, right? and a lot of people, a lot of beginners, frankly, a lot of anywhere from mid handicap down um, or, or up, however you wanna yeah. call it, but the average golfer does not understand spin loft. For sure. And I mean, we see a ton of people and, and students of yours that come in who swing plenty fast. Yeah. Their spin loft is just way too high. Absolutely. They spin it a ton, the ball doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, they got great ball speeds, yeah. but they just don't get optimal launch conditions, yeah. right? And I say that to people all the time. It's like, I play with a lot of guys that are a lot faster than I am and create faster ball speeds, but I'm fairly efficient in what I do, right? So I get everything out of what I'm swinging it, where you see, the average person that comes in here probably doesn't, right? So is, let's say 95 miles an hour, the average male, um, they can hit it a lot further than they think with numbers like these, right? So obviously it doesn't have to be to this extreme, but if you're someone who's hitting four or five degrees down on it, which we see on a, on a daily basis, you are giving up something to the field. Then hot losing. melt becomes your friend. True. You right? know, the there lower, are things yeah. we can do without manipulating your golf swing, for example, yeah. where instead of manipulating your golf swing, we, we are in fact, manipulating the club to fit you. Absolutely. There's yeah. there's different ways to optimize both and, and we really need to find that happy marriage between the two. Yes. Uh, because there, there are too many people that try and change their golf swing to optimize yeah. what TrackMan says would be perfect, but then they don't own their golf swing anymore and they, That's you know what I mean, that creates struggles. For sure. That's where like, I'm someone who my tendency is to tilt back and to hit up on it. So if I try and bring that down to one or two degrees, I'm just not comfortable mm -hmm. and I lose a lot of speed and I lose a bunch of things that, that just, it's not worth the trade off, right? But if you're someone who plays the ball fairly forwards in your stance and your weight gets here and you kind of sway and everything's downwards, well, there are a few things that you can change in your setup to help you. Maybe you don't hit six degrees up on it, but maybe you level it out, right? And you create a lot better, mm -hmm optimization and, and better launch conditions, right? So it's important to understand and talk to your fitter about this too and say, hey, you know what? My miss isn't left or right, it's it's I spin them all the time. Or um, if that's the case too, if you're someone who strikes it on the heel or low on the face, you kind of throw all these things out of the window, right? Because if, if I hit it really off the bottom but hit nine degrees up on it and have 10 degrees aloft, I'm still gonna spin it in the 3000s, right? So strike location is really, really important and I think the more that you hit up on it, the more apt you are to hitting it low on the face because that driver is kind of rising through the strike location. If you're someone who has some sky marks as we all have in our lifetime on the driver, typically that means you're hitting down. It's very hard to hit it high on the crown with an upwards attack angle of plus two, three, four, five degrees, right? So you have to understand that everybody's a little bit different and some people have to exaggerate things to create decent numbers, right? So if you're someone who knows that they hit five or six degrees down on it, try that, get behind the golf ball, get your head back, right? Get your right shoulder down or if you're a lefty, the opposite, but try and create that angle so that as you come down through the downswing, you can kind of bottom out three or four inches behind it and then you can kind of rise up through that, that follow through. Yeah, and, make sure your hands are moving up, not the club head. Absolutely, right? right? I, I, the last thing I want ha to have happen is my left wrist break down and that right hand just take over. Um, obviously that's a way to over square the club face or shut the club face as well as create the attack angle, but that's where you're gonna go 
I'm, I'm hitting up on it and I'm losing yards. Well, yeah, you're probably hitting it straight up in the, eye, in, in, in the sky, right? So it's important to understand. And I think certain drivers create different launch conditions too, right? Obviously there's drivers that have more center of gravity towards the back. Um, there's drivers that the weight's a little bit more forwards, which typically creates a little bit lower spin. Do you know anybody that might be able to help find drivers? You know what? I think I know, might know somebody. Um, I know a decent fitter. For sure. No, and, and I think <laughs> it's important to, to talk to your fitter about that. And if something, if, you know what, if, if a little bit more spin keeps you down the fairway and you lose a little bit of yards in total, that's okay too, right? And, and understand that not everybody's going for 1900. That's, that's a very important thing to talk about that often people try and turn a fitting into a lesson. For sure. They're very different things. When you come into a fitting, let the fitter build the club to fit your swing. Yep. Um, often people will get in there and, and realize, oh, you know, they see the numbers and if I can hit a little more up on it, I'll reduce spin, I'll hit it further. That's a big one. People yeah. get shocked when they Ab see those numbers. Absolutely. What you end up doing is you end up modifying your swing and then the drivers fit towards a swing that really isn't what you're gonna do outside. Yeah. So part of making sure you have a good fitter, that conversation has to happen. Your fitter needs to build clubs for you. You're not supposed to switch you to fit the clubs your fitter's giving you. Absolutely. And a good fitter will make sure that they maximize what you do well. Yeah. There and might be a little bit of both. I was gonna say, yeah, and I think you're absolutely right. And I think I always give people information so that they can do with it what they please, mm -hmm. right? If, if someone comes in and goes, well, why am I hitting it so short? Well, then that's when the spin loft talk kind of comes up, right? Because that's and a common convo. Very, very common, yeah. right? Like I get guys all the time go, that ball speed was faster, but it went shorter. And they don't understand that ball speed isn't the biggest determinant of how long it goes, right? So spin is is more the big determinant, right? So like, uh, great example, I fit someone on the weekend, right? Who 118 ball speed with a nine iron, it went 150 yards. 120 ball speed with a five iron, he hit it a little heavy, it went 195 yards, right? So. so two miles an hour more, which is almost nothing. Yeah, it was about 50 yards in difference. And 50 yards of difference. 50. So that's where you see it all the time. And I think when things come up like that, I always kind of highlight it and show people and go, look, that, that's what happened there. That's why it went 195. It's not because you hit it dead solid and, and, and all those things, right? So yeah, I think it's important to, to talk to your fitter about, hey, maybe what do I need to get the most out of my, my driver swing, right? And it might be a conversation that you have quickly, but don't go down the rabbit hole during your two hour fitting or your hour fitting. Make sure that you take notes or ask them to send you kind of information and go work on that on your range. Or if you have a setup like this, obviously go and, and, and try and maximize what you're doing. Don't try and do it during a fitting, right? It's, it's hard to do that. Mm -hmm. Some people change very quickly, but if you know you're not that person, Definitely just take your time. and Makes and it hard on your fitter, makes it hard on you. You hard. end up with something that probably isn't going to be the best fit. For sure. For so sure. since you went and grabbed that thing from the rack, which is I, an absolute beauty. I realized I should have used this. Why don't you um, smack one? Just okay. give us give us one. Rip. Okay. And the, the reason I would have used this is because these drivers were not so big, right? These are little drivers. So the sweet spot's smaller. They were beautiful though. They're gorgeous. This is art. Um, but the biggest thing is the center of gravity is so far forwards, right? So with those golf balls that they used to use, they spun a hell of a lot more. So these things are rocks comparatively. So that's where these technically or are, are traditionally don't spin a whole lot with the new modern golf ball. So let's showcase a couple here. So let's show you the example. So I can't quite tee it up as high as I would with a modern day driver here is I'm probably going to go underneath the thing. Well, let's try here. So give us a good rip. That's pretty solid. It sounds so solid. It sounds great. Oh, I wish there was a way that these drivers would still be relevant. <laughs> They're so good. So there's a lot of curvature right. on that, but there's a so, 15 and, launch. And that goes to show the difference in the, in the older technology where if you don't hit it like button, oh, it's, it, it's, it's going sideways. Absolutely. So that's when there where again, dynamic loft, 15.7, attack angle, 7.6. Yeah. So spin loft was at 10 degrees. Now those numbers don't really coincide quite as well. Yeah, just because strike location. Strike location wasn't Absolutely. quite as good. Yeah. Give me one more here. because right. one more here. We gotta give you a fair, fair shake. All right, deal. Oh, that came out low. Goes to show new technology oh, is definitely helpful for everybody. Absolutely. But I again, can't... there. 
12 degrees dynamic loft, 11.9, yeah. 4.4 attack angle. Um, and I got so 3,200 spin because right. I hit that low on the face, right? Right. So, I mean, that's where the old drivers, you don't get away with as much. No, no. They do look cool, though. Very much so, yep. yeah. Well, I mean, look, he's the guy that can hit every shot. I can do it once in a while. If he, Mark and I go play golf, I shoot 75, he shoots 65. There's a big fucking difference.